Hello, in this video, we'll have a look on how can you build Microsoft Teams personal apps easily with SharePoint Framework. And this is as easy as it gets because using SharePoint Framework, you do not need to worry about hosting, deployments, operations, or even optimizations because we actually host everything for you automatically. You can grant the permissions or there are certain permissions available for the, for the API usage. And we even optimize the flow using Office 365 if that is enabled in a tenant level. So really, if you're looking into exposing simple enterprise applications in the Microsoft Teams, but not even necessarily that simple even, um, but exposing enterprise applications in Microsoft Teams SharePoint framework is definitely Definitely the easiest way to get started. And we're seeing a lot of adaption on this model. And, and also, more importantly, any existing SharePoint framework solution can be exposed as a Microsoft Teams personal application within the matter of minutes. And this is really also the key. So you can actually um, take advantage of the existing investments if you have done any SharePoint framework extensibility uh, or web parts in the past. And all of those web parts will actually work as a Microsoft Teams tabs in a channel or as a Microsoft Teams personal app without actually changing any code. So using the same code base, using the same exact code, you're able to basically expose your business application potentially in SharePoint, in the SharePoint portal or in the SharePoint team sites or in a Microsoft Teams in a channel or in a Microsoft Teams as a personal application or personal app. So really kind of an interesting scenario and is really cost efficient because again, hosting automatic deployment, automatic uh, permission management, automatic and even optimization with CDN completely automatic. So nobody has to worry about all of that stuff. So how do we actually get started on this one? So let me actually jump uh, to a browser and we kind of concentrate on the upgrade scenario in this case. Um, if you're not familiar of what is a SharePoint framework, I strongly recommend you to go through our uh, SharePoint framework tutorial videos and the series. And there's quite a few videos and examples how to get started on creating a SharePoint framework solution and we have an explicit uh, tutorial which is explaining how to get started on building Microsoft Teams tabs using SharePoint uh, Framework. So quite simple tutorial and I think the video is like 15 minutes and you can easily run through the process and it is as simple as possible and you're using all of the greatest web stack development tooling, the latest versions of React and all of that stuff. So really, really cool. Now, what if you have an existing solution or you have gone through this process to follow up and create your first Microsoft Teams tab? So how do I get that existing solution and make that to be exposed as a personal application or personal app for the Microsoft Teams users? And let's actually concentrate on that scenario and, and slightly touch also if you have an existing older version of SharePoint framework, how do I actually upgrade to the right level? Because the personal application support came with the SharePoint framework 1.10. So let's actually walk this through uh, one step at a time. It doesn't take too long, but trust me, it's definitely worthwhile to go through. So first of all, we're going to use our example scenario here, which is a Leeds LOB solution. This is quite nice uh, a scenario, which we originally implemented for, I think, SharePoint Conference 2018, and then we've been evolving that uh, since then. Uh, I'm not sure if it was even a Microsoft Teams tabs at the time, but then we implemented that as a Microsoft Teams tabs and all that stuff. So it's quite a nice solution uh, demonstrating how to integrate to LOB systems and surfacing data uh, in, in SharePoint Online in cloud, potentially even using your on-premises uh, data, which is a slight sidetrack on the discussion. So let's not actually go there. Now, this application and this solution originally was based on SharePoint Framework 1.8. So how did we upgrade this to use SharePoint Framework 1.10 was that we use Office 365 CLI. If you're not familiar with this tooling, please have a look on this. This is absolutely brilliant cross-platform uh, tool, which gives you the capability of managing uh, Office 365 tenant settings. And in this case, more importantly, it gives you an actual insight on how to upgrade your solution. So if you go to the SharePoint framework, project and upgrade, and that's actually a command which you execute, uh, for example, using the uh, switches to version uh, 1.10 and getting output, for example, in MD format, you will get a list of all of the actions to be applied to upgrade your solution between the different versions. So you can specify a target version. If you don't specify a target version, it's going to upgrade to the latest version as well. And typically when we release a new version of SharePoint framework, we pretty much on the following day or so, or even following hours, we actually release a new version of Office 365 CLI, 
with the latest guidance on how to upgrade to a solution. So in our case, that would actually mean that I've, I've now pulled down my that solution uh, from GitHub, the LLB solution. You can absolutely download that. It is a full, uh, fully open source and you can use it any way you want. And basically using the Office 365 uh, CLI is nothing more than actually installing the CLI. And when it's actually installed, you can just simply use the command line tooling and do something like SPFX uh, project uh, upgrade uh, as the command in our case, um, we already upgraded the solution to 1.10 version, so there's nothing to be upgraded, so everything is already in the right version. So, but if that would not be the case, you would get an actually list of actions to be applied in the solution to make the solution version to match the latest one. So pretty, pretty uh, awesome tool uh, to take advantage. Now, how do we then take an existing web part, sorry, Teams tab implementation of SharePoint Framework and expose that as a, micro, uh, as a personal application in Microsoft Teams. Well, without any code changes, of course, because we want to make it as simple as possible. So this is the existing implementation uh, and this is the metadata uh, for the web part. So that's our leads web part, basically matching an individual uh, tab or a web part rendering. So if I go back in the picture, it is that functionality over there or that functionality over there. It's the same functionality just being exposed in a multiple different applications. So how do we actually then define that, hey, we would like to have this one exposed also as a personal app? Well, it's nothing more than updating our supported hosts and in the supported host selections, we kind of say, yep, yeah, we want this to be also a personal app saving and that's it and basically we are good to go so only thing what we now need to do is call a bundle let's do a call bundle ship uh, so we can actually prepare our solution making sure that we have a bundle and bundles available for packaging one two three one two three this will actually take a while because it is a relatively complex solution and not well not super long but it will take a while to actually comply uh, especially the web back section is the one which will take a while. So we'll speed up potentially this section in here to save some time. Well, actually that wasn't too fast. So now, and the second command uh, is then uh, gulp uh, package uh, solution. So we're gonna do a repackaging of the solution as an SPP KG file, which I now can send an email to somebody else and they will get the same result. Um, and again, no hosting required, no nothing. Everything is automatically hosted for us. So making it really super easy to expose the functionality uh, in a tenant level. Good. So let's actually open up uh, that folder uh, in File Explorer. And in the SharePoint, uh, we can actually see that based on the GitHub uh, updates, and that is now the latest version. So the leads LOB SPP KT file waiting to get deployed in the tenant. Good. So in my case, uh, we wanted to actually walk this through as well. So in my case, in my tenant, uh, we already have the Teams application running in the Teams. So it is actually being exposed to older version of the Teams. Uh, you might have this situation or might not have this situation. We wanted to actually walk through the process of upgrading as well. Now, since we have this solution already available, we cannot just update the latest version of SVP KT file to the SharePoint app catalog and synchronize the solution to Microsoft Teams. So how we need to approach this is to actually go to the app section and let's go to our organizational view. We're going to save different applications, which I've installed. Let's get rid of the leads. So I'm going to do delete and get rid of the, the, the leads application because I want to install a new version which will support also personal apps uh, exposure. And now we can actually go to the app catalog, SharePoint app catalog. Let's go to the app uh, catalog listing. Uh, in my case, I have quite a few solutions available here. One of them being the Elite LOB application. So either way, I could override this or I can actually go here and delete the existing solution. That's fine as well. So delete document. Let's get rid of that. And we had the updated solution package available. There we go, nothing more. You could actually get this one in email uh, from a trusted partner. You could get this one to your tenant or whatever, or you can download it from internet as well. The SPPKT file is available from there, but always be careful when you're installing stuff to your tenant. So you need to understand that we are actually running in a full trust client side code here. So you need to understand what's inside of the SVP KG file. And I want to actually make it available across all of the sites. So that's more impactful for SharePoint side of the house, not really on the team side uh, for time being. 
good. So now if I scroll down and if we do uh, here, we can actually see that that solution is available in the app catalog of SharePoint, but that doesn't mean that it's yet available in the team site. So for now, since we do not have yet a unified uh, app catalog between the teams and SharePoint, we need to do things uh, in a two different steps. But you potentially know or notice this one already. So I can actually, we have this functionality called sync to teams. And because this solution contains uh, so, uh, packages and parts which are targeted for Microsoft Teams, we could just easily do sync to Teams. And that functionality will be basically then visible in here. We're able to, on the top right corner, we're able to see the status of the notification successfully synced uh, team solution. So that's good. That's being synced on the team side. And that means that after a while, when we actually click uh, the build for uh, SPP, uh, for M365, the organizational catalog, we can actually see the solution here available. Now, this one actually will take a while to refresh. So there is a caching functionality uh, in the Teams, uh, which is showing only subset of the, the solutions and apps after a while, and really depends on the luck when the solution is available. But in our case, actually, we were super lucky. Um, so the caching expired, and we're able to actually see the leads in here. We are able to see that uh, it can be a tab, or it can be a personal app. Well, that was easy. So only thing what we needed to do, no manifest updates, no nothing. Whenever we clicked the sync to Teams button in here, based on the web part settings, SharePoint automated the creation of the Teams manifest. So as simple as it gets, based on the settings of the web part, we basically created the manifest file uh, automatically for you. Now, you could also manually create the manifest file and manually deploy it in here. So that's definitely an option as well. But again, we can add this as a personal application. So let's do that. Let's get add and voila, we have our personal application leads exposed in the left navigation. And that obviously is automatically hosted and uh, true CDN um, based on your settings and optimized and deployment and everything is completely included as part of the Office 365 subscription. It's pretty cool. And obviously now I can do stuff like pinning this application to the left menu. So whenever I come back on Teams and uh, the solution exists here, or potentially if it's a, let's say, corporate wide solution, you can pin that to a specific set of app, um, organizations or users. You can target applications specifically to a certain subset of people based on their attributes as well, using Microsoft Teams admin center. But that's uh, as simple as it gets. Uh, so the only changes, once again, uh, for existing web parts is that we need to be in a SharePoint Framework 1.10 version. If you're creating a new version of SharePoint Framework application, then that is obviously using 1.10 or a newer. Then we need to set uh, the supported host to be Teams Personal App, Package, Deploy, and we are good to go of exposing the application as a personal app in the Microsoft Teams. And then whatever the application does, that's obviously up to you from a scenario perspective. Now, and just to recap also, if you are interested on testing out uh, this solution, uh, it is available at github.com slash SharePoint uh, slash SP Dev Solutions. Uh, and in that repository solutions and leads LOB solution is, is the one which actually has exactly what you're seeing visible right now in here, which has already been upgraded to work as a personal app. So it has been already updated to that level. But that's pretty much um, what we intended to go here. Maybe one more point to point out because uh, we are, seem to be getting questions related on this one as well. So what if your personal apps have multiple tabs, which the personal apps absolutely could have? So you can definitely do that. Um, in that case, you would not actually use the automatic manifest creation. You would just have multiple web parts, uh, which are individual web parts or with the individual web parts with this different uh, configuration would be then configured as individual tabs for your personal application. Um, but again, you'll have the benefits of automatic hosting, automatic config, uh, deployment, uh, operations, CDN optimized, and all of that stuff. And from here, you can certainly still call Web API, get access on bots and whatever is needed if you prefer to do so. But um, as at the simple scenarios, uh, you do not need to have any Azure instance necessarily even available. 
But again, that sums up uh, the quick summary on how to get started on using and create using SharePoint framework to create your um, Microsoft Teams personal apps. That's quite easy, isn't it? Thank you.